First of all, we need to continue to remember Bo Chancellor as he continues to have some long-term problems. Barbara Davis had significant surgery this past week, but she's already back home in the home, so we need to remember Harry and Barbara. Bill King has been very ill and still is, although he is getting better. Um, he's expected to be in the hospital still for about another week, isn't that correct? And then for about six weeks in, in a rehab facility. So we need to remember Bill and Charlene. Kathy Courtright, that's Doc's sister. We've been told that she has breast cancer and will have serious surgery on the 9th of next month, November 9th. So we need to remember Kathy. Wednesday night, we'll have potluck for our meal. So bring your favorite dish and then we'll have our study in First Peter, right? So let's remember that. This past Wednesday night, if you weren't privileged to be here, we had a wonderful, wonderful evening. Um, we celebrated Jack and Karen's good news about their health concerns, and Elizabeth Hall was baptized into Christ. And she is sick this morning with a stomach problem, so we may need to remember Elizabeth. I don't believe I have anything else. Does anything else need to be said before we start a worship service? If not, we'll begin with prayer. Our Father, who is holy and sitting on his throne at this very moment in the heavens, and our Father, who is the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who is at your right hand, the one who has allowed us to be saved through him, the one who has put his spirit inside of us. To you we give praise, and we give honor, and we give glory. And we understand what Paul meant when he said that in you we live, and we move, and we have our very being. And so we come before you in praise, we come before you in thanksgiving, knowing that we have been so richly and wonderfully blessed. We come before you this morning wanting to ask you to continue to watch over us, help us in our struggle to be faithful to you, protect us from Satan who is continually trying to destroy us. And Father, we pray this morning that uh, you would be with those who have been mentioned who are having uh, health difficulties, especially Kathy Courtright. Pray, Father, for her uh, surgery this week and that you will bless her through that and and we don't know exactly what the situation of Bo is, and we pray, Father, that you be with him and be with Stan as she deals with all that. And Father, there are still words of thanksgiving we give for Jack and for Karen and for Elizabeth and for all those good things that have happened there. And we want to honor you this morning by being together. We want to honor you by our songs, by our words, by our prayers. And we do that all through the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we love you. We worship and adore you. Glorify thy name in all the earth. Glorify thy name.
Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for the day. We want to thank you for the opportunity we have to come together to worship you, we pray, in spirit and in truth. Really, Father, we do want to thank you for the rain that we received and the cooler temperatures that we are enjoying. Dear Father, we want to continue to pray for those that were mentioned and those we may be unaware of that their health isn't what they want it to be. We pray that if it be your will, you restore them to their much wanted health. Dear Lord, we want to continue to pray for those families that have recently lost loved ones. We pray that you comfort them as only you can. Dear Lord, at this time, we also want to pray for our country and our state as the midterm elections are approaching fast. And we just pray that you put leaders in, in place that will do what's right and, and will be best for our country and our state. Dear Lord, we want to pray for our congregation. We want to thank you for each and every member and how we bless each other. Dear Lord, we want to continue to give you thanks and thank, especially thank you for sending your son Jesus to die for us so through him we might have, have hope of everlasting life. Dear Lord, we ask that you continue to forgive us and bless us. Go with us through this service. May everything we say and do be in accordance with your holy and divine will. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. He leadeth me, O blessed thought, O words with heavenly comfort from Whatever I do, wherever I be, still tis God's hand that leadeth me. He leadeth me, He leadeth me, by His assure you that one subject we're not going to talk about this morning is Oklahoma State football. Uh, I'm not sure what happened there, and, and Greg McKee is really having a good time with that, I think, uh, because I've made so much fun of OU football and OU over the years, but uh, we didn't do so well yesterday. I'm really glad you're here this morning. I appreciate you being here. We're going to be for the last time, at least for a while, in the book of Joshua. But we are in our 10th lesson in this 24-chapter book of Joshua. And it's right there at the end, and chapters 23 and 24. And we've already been told twice that Joshua is old. And now we learn that he is, I think the words are very, very old. And he will pass away at the age of 110 years. And he knows he's about to die. It's not unexpected. Because he tells the people, I'm about to go the way of this earth. And that's what the scripture will say a lot of times when someone's about to die. They're about to go the way of this earth. And so what he's going to do in chapters 23 and 24 is give his last words of instruction to the people. Last words that are hopefully meaningful to all of us this morning, at least in one respect. So we're going to be reading a section of material out of chapter 23, and a little tiny section out of chapter 24. We normally don't read this much, but I, I want you to capture kind of the essence, I think the essence, of what he's going to be saying. We're going to begin in chapter 23. I'm going to begin to look, verse, look at verse 6, if I can read it from here. Be very strong. Now, by the way, I told you a few weeks ago that Caleb 
was a man who was, you remember, faith-filled and faithful. It allowed him, therefore, to look at life with a different perspective. It allowed him to have courage against major obstacles. Joshua is the same kind of person. All the way through the life of Joshua. Everything you've ever read about Joshua, even during the days of Moses, he was faith-filled and faithful. And that's essentially what he's telling these people. Be very strong. Be careful to obey all that is written in the book of the law of Moses without turning aside to the right or to the left. Do not associate with these nations that remain among you. Do not invoke the names of their gods or swear by them. You must not serve them or bow down to them. But you are to hold fast to the Lord your God as you have until now. The Lord has driven out before you great and powerful nations. To this day, no one has been able to withstand you. One of you routs a thousand because the Lord your God fights for you, just as he promised. So be very careful to love the Lord your God. But if you turn away and ally yourself with the survivors of these nations that remain among you, and if you intermarry with them and associate with them, then you may be sure that the Lord your God will no longer drive out these nations before you. Instead, they will become your snares and traps for you, whips on your back, thorns in your eyes, and you until you will perish from this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Wow. Love God. Be faith-filled and be faithful. But if you turn... Thorns in your eyes, whips on your back. Wow. Then in chapter 24, verses 14 and 15. Now fear the Lord, serve him with all faithfulness. Throw away the gods of your ancestors. Worship beyond the Euphrates River in, in Egypt and, and serve the Lord. But if serving the Lord seems undesirable to you, then choose for yourself this day whom you will serve, whether the gods of your ancestors served beyond the Euphrates or the gods of the Amorites in whose land you're now living. But as for me, as for my household, we will serve the Lord. It goes on to say that the people will say, far be it from us to serve anyone but the God who has done this for us. And there's one little phrase that I want to pick up on in all that. It's a simple little lesson this morning. Simple little thought, but really important. Choose. If it seems undesirable to you to serve the Lord, if you decided that it's not the way you ought to go, then choose this day whom you will serve. And I've tried to think this week about choices and how we have the freedom to choose. Now, there may be some little areas of life right now where you do not have freedom to completely choose what you want. But for the most part, is it not true that we have the freedom to choose? We have the freedom in this country, at least, to choose whom we want to marry. We have the freedom to choose where we want to live. And so Paul and Michelle, living in California, chose to make a move and move here. And this group right here, living in Boulder, Colorado, decided to choose to come and live here. And Elizabeth, who is sick today, but she was living in Oregon, and she chose to come and live here. You, get, you have that freedom to choose. And within reason, you have the freedom to choose what kind of work you'll do in this life. And you have the freedom to choose your lifestyle, how, how you're going to go about day-by-day day living. 
We have all kinds of freedom to choose. And as we find in this text, we have the freedom to choose whether or not we're going to follow God. You're completely free. The whole world is free to choose. And how interesting it is to me that so many, more and more all the time, refuse to choose to follow God. But there's something else about this choice that I want you to see. And that is that what you choose today shapes your tomorrow. Now, all of us understand that, don't you? Can you think back in your life over the years, some of the key choices that you've made and how it has now affected what you're doing today? I chose years and years, way long time ago, to marry Suze. And where I am today and what I'm doing today is in part because of that choice. And when we were new in our marriage, and we had these two small children, we were invited to go back to Oklahoma State, and I was working there, and they said they would pay me as a full-time faculty member if I would finish my PhD, or if I would complete a PhD. But I remember distinctly Susan and I pausing and talking. Maybe we ought to make a different choice. And so I thought seriously for a bit of time about going to law school because I had been told that if you become a professional engineer and then you go to law school, you can get into this product liability world and you can make a lot of money. But we chose the easier pathway, easier because I didn't know how I would take care of my family financially if I went to law school. But that choice has largely determined where we are today. And along the way, we chose to move to Lubbock, Texas. And in some ways, it was a bad choice because we were moving our daughter at the wrong time as she was entering high school. And when we first arrived in Lubbock, Suze would look at Lubbock and think, I don't like Lubbock. It's flat, and there are no trees, and the wind blows, and it often carries dirt with it. Now, over time, she learned to love it. But that choice, that choice led me to this place called Lubbock Christian University for 19 years. I loved that job. That was a... It was hard at times, but it, I loved that job. Can you think of choices that you've made that affected where you are even today? And I know sometimes we make bad choices. And so we, we, we choose some things that, that aren't so good, and we're in a place where you, we don't want to be because we, we, we chose that back there. Everybody understand? You're a product today of choices you've made in the past. Last weekend, Mackenzie came and spent the weekend with us. She's about to graduate from Oklahoma Christian. And we watched some Hallmark movies that I'd recorded for her before she'd be here. In one of those movies, it said, Someone said, your actions today will determine what you're going to be tomorrow. And I said, that's partly true, but it becomes the choices that you have today will determine what you're going to be like tomorrow. Now, the good news of all this is, you and I can start making some choices right now that are still different and will affect our tomorrow. Do you know that? And how many times have we gone to a doctor and a doctor has said, if you don't start doing it this way, how you're eating, for example, this is where you're going to end up. And therefore, we choose to make that change. Anyone ever done that? Have you ever heard of anyone where they're going to a doctor and the doctor says, if you don't quit the smoking, for example, you will have this particular problem before very long? And some people choose to quit. 
Your choices today shape your tomorrow. And the choice you're making right now is going to shape your tomorrow. But I've got another one about choices. And that is the good choices we make in this life are really difficult to stick with and really difficult to maintain. All, all of you understand that? I don't know how many times I've mentioned the influence of Satan, but it's real. And anything you're doing that's good in this life, he wants to destroy. And so I mentioned choosing to marry Suze. And virtually everyone in the audience has chosen to marry, except maybe Catherine and the Gideon. Gideon, you haven't chosen anyone yet, have you? No, no. And, and you choose to marry, but I'm going to tell you something. I don't have to tell you, you already know. Is it easy? Is it easy to stay with it for a long, long time? And are there a lot of things that pull you away and, and make you want to kind of give up? And Satan's involved in all that. Satan wants to do he, anything that's good, he wants to destroy. And I talked about choosing the lifestyle you have. He wants you to choose the worst kind of lifestyle you can possibly have because he doesn't want you to be healthy. He doesn't want you to be strong. He doesn't want anything good to happen to you. And, and then you come to this idea of choosing, as Joshua said to them, to continue to be faith-filled and faithful. Do you know what happened to those people? Anyone know what happened to those people to whom Joshua spoke? Now, they made a declaration. They said, far be it from us. We, we're going to choose God, Joshua. We know you're old. We know about you, you're about to die. You go to, you go to your deathbed and rest because we're sticking with God. And you turn the page. And you turn the page in your Bible. And it's Judges chapter 1. And it begins like this. After the death of Joshua... And some years pass. You read three-fourths of chapter 1. Some years pass, and they keep conquering the land. They keep driving out the people. But then, at the very last third of that chapter or so, I guess they grow tired of the fighting. I guess they grow tired of the conflict. I guess they see advantages of maybe stopping that kind of lifestyle. And they began to associate with people who are remaining in that land. And they began to marry their daughters. And they began to pay a bit more attention to their way of life and the gods that they serve. And you open up to chapter 2 of the book of Judges. And that stuff about these people will take hold of you and they'll put whips on your back and they'll put thorns in your eyes... They will take hold of you and capture you. That's exactly what happens. These people are so in much in trouble. And when they're as low as they can get, and when the bondage is so great, and when life is so miserable, they'll cry out and say, God, will you help me again? Isn't that something, how it works in life? These good choices are so very difficult to maintain. Even to this day, I, I make some choices, and I rock along, and it gets really hard. And I begin to think, I, I don't know if I want to keep this up. I don't want to keep this up. Does that make sense to anybody? And so you look at this last thought, the greatest choice that you'll ever make. And that's what we try to talk about every Sunday when we gather together. The greatest choice you'll ever make is what you're going to do with Jesus Christ. Now, the interesting thing is, you think about that, your choice about Jesus will determine your tomorrows. You understand that? It'll determine how you live. 
It'll determine the quality of life that you live. It will determine where you go, what you do. It'll have such influence on you. But if you choose to walk with Jesus, will it be difficult to maintain that walk? Will it be difficult? So on Wednesday nights, we spent all this time in the book of Hebrews, week after week after week, and what we saw was these people are growing tired and weary and discouraged, and Satan is influencing them, and they're just, they're just saying no more. And they're going back to a former way of life. You know, you know what we're talking about here? We're talking about our future. And I just mentioned the fact that choosing Jesus, you live better, but I don't talk so often, I think, about the real issue. The real issue is what happens after we die. Everybody see that? The real issue is what happens after we die. It's a big issue what happens to me right now. I'm concerned about what happens to me today. I'm concerned about how I live tomorrow. I want to live the best I can. I want to make the most of this life while I'm here. Everybody else want to do that too? That's part of following Jesus. I want to make the most of this life while I'm here. But what I'm figuring out is I'm not going to be here very long. I'm not going to be here very long. People tell me all the time that I look like my dad. It's kind of hard for me to talk about, actually. But they tell me all the time I look like him. And I can remember when we took him to the nursing home. What he looked like without his shirt on. I can remember what his legs looked like. And I look in the mirror and sometimes I think, you really do look like him. I looked at my knees this last week and thought, they look just like daddy's knees. I don't think we're going to be here very long. I don't think any of us are going to be here very long. You know what comes next? One or two things. We're either going to be escorted when we go the way of this earth. We're going to be escorted by angels into the literal hands of God, into the hands of Jesus, into paradise. I know that's the way it works. That's what the Scripture teaches. Or we're going to be escorted into a place that's really bad. Ken Boggs asked me not too long ago, why don't you ever talk about hell? I don't like to talk about it. I don't like to talk about it. But the scripture says it is as real as heaven. It's ever been as real as heaven. And while heaven is paradise, what do you know about hell? Is it hot? Well, that's, I didn't even, I didn't even, that's, that, that's a weak term. It's fire, it's brutal punishment, it's horrible. And you say, well, what kind of God would do that? I'll tell you the kind of God who would do that. The kind of God who loved us so much that he would send himself in the form of his son to this earth to die. And he would watch his son be mocked. He would mocked, watch his son be spit upon. He would watch his son be slapped. He would watch his son be whipped. He would watch his son be nailed to a cross. And all the while, he would be inviting everyone, come and have forgiveness of sins through my son. And then he, on his throne, he's watching in dismay, saying, why aren't you doing that? Why, why aren't you following my son? And he gets really upset with people who reject the great gift they gave. And it's all about choice. Isn't that interesting? It's just all about choice. You get to choose. You get to choose who you marry. You get to choose whether or not you keep that marriage going. You get to choose the job. You get to choose whether or not you quit the job. You get to choose and choose and choose. 
And you get to choose whether or not you're going to be a follower of Jesus Christ. And what you choose today so very definitely shapes what will happen tomorrow. It's just the way it works. But I chose to go the doctoral route instead of the law school because it was easier. And you be very careful about easier. I need to quit. I, I, I know I'm just... But you be very careful about easier. It's easier to walk the way of this world. It didn't, didn't Jesus say something about a broad way and a narrow way and a broad way? The only, the only difference is one's easier. One's easier. And most people are going to take the easy way. So let's pause right now and remember. Just remember we have a choice. But the choice all centers about Jesus, who came to us, who came to us and invited us to enter into his world as he entered into our world, to be born again into his world. It's quite a gift. It makes a huge difference, doesn't it? So let's take those emblems right now. Shall we pray? We thank you, Father, for this day, and we're just so thankful, Father, for all the many blessings, Father. Most of all, we are so thankful for Jesus, for coming to this earth, showing us the example of how to have love and compassion for our fellow man, how to help each other. But most of all, we're thankful for the opportunity that this death gives us that we might have a home with thee, Father. Be with us now as we break this bread which symbolizes your son's broken body. May we do so in a most pleasing manner. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As we continue to gather around this table and as we continue to focus on the cross, pray, Father, that we'll focus on the pain, focus on the suffering, focus on the love that you have for each one of us. Be with us, each one of us now as we Take this fruit of the vine, which symbolizes your son's blood. May we do so in a pleasing manner. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, let me close by saying a couple things. And one is that I so much appreciate all of you choosing week after week to come and be with us. It, it's uh, it helps me in so many ways just to see you and, uh, and watch your expressions as I speak. And so I, I, I thank you for choosing to come and be a part of our assemblies. And I'm thankful for all those who, who watch us from a distance and who will in some ways and sometimes tell us a little bit how grateful they are that we have Burke to be putting this out. And, and Greg Turner was talking this morning to Burke and he was talking about he was looking at some things on the internet about golf and looking at some little short segments. And he said, all of a sudden, here came a little short segment from our time together last week about judging. And I don't know how many times Burke said it had been watched, but maybe some of those have been watched a couple hundred times, some of them watched 400 times. And, and the bad part of that is he said they're, they're 90 seconds long and people stop after 56 seconds on average. They just don't like what I talk about. So, I, so I'm glad you keep putting up with it and you keep coming. Uh, I also want to thank you this morning for choosing to, to live by Jesus Christ. I can tell you I know from personal experience it's not always easy. I get tired and I get weary. And I know you do too. And there are some Sundays that I am even set right up here and I'm thinking the energy is just not there. And I start begging God to give me the energy because I get tired. We all do. But hopefully you don't get so tired you quit. Okay? Because the good choices are the ones you hold on to with all your might. You fight for them. And you become faith-filled and faithful, and you just don't give up. And that's what we're called to do. 
It's what we call you to do this morning. Let's sing our final song. Let's stand while we sing it. I can hear my Savior calling. Our dear Heavenly Father, how great thou art and how humbly we come before you. We thank you so much, O oh God, for this day. We thank you so much, O oh God, for choosing us to be your children. O oh Lord, may we this day and every day always choose Jesus. <clears throat> Our prayer, O oh God, as we go through this week, that we, you give us the mind of Christ, that you give us the eyes of Christ, that we see other people, that we see the opportunities are before us. We ask that you give us strength that we may always boldly bring to them this new word. Our hearts are especially happy this week, O oh God, with the addition of Elizabeth, and we just ask that you continue to bless her walk through this life. May we be an encouragement to her and each other. O oh God, we ask always that we humble ourselves, that we put on Christ in our daily lives, and that we be doers of your word and not hearers only. Be with us and bless us always through this week. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.